sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Man, this will be a box office smash, have to be. Yeah. I think theaters are going to have to have. I don't know, extra showings for this movie that's about to come out that's hitting the theaters this Friday, All Eyes on Me, that chronicles the life and times of one of the most iconic figures to ever come from hip-hop culture, mm -hmm. uh, from this country, if you will, for entertainment across the board. Uh, somebody I grew up with, uh, a friend of mine, I got pictures that I never even revealed of us hanging out in Oakland. From his home to Sway and Tech Wake Up Show, mm. we end up doing his last interview um, before his untimely demise, something we don't talk about a whole lot. Right. You know, uh, but this is a multifaceted man who touched people so much so that even 21 years um, after his death, he still is top of the mind conversation, topical conversation. I'm talking about Tupac Shakur. Now, sitting in the studios with us today, are two people who are in this film, All Eyes on Me. Uh, one of them I got a chance to just meet, um, who plays the character of Suge Knight. Uh, he's from the same place I believe our friend Atheon Crockett is from. Yep, and J. Cole. And J. Yeah. Cole, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Please welcome him to the show, the one and only Dominic L. Santana. What up, Woo! Thank you, thank you. Play Suge Knight. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, I'm honored to be here, man. Yeah, I'm honored. I'm, you know you made it when you on sway. Oh, oh hey man, there you go. Man. This is it. If you was going really smooth already, man, it's gonna be all right. And that's a sound bite. All yeah, right, there it is. Make sure you make that a sweeper. Uh, the other uh, young man I got a chance to meet. We all met him at the same time. Um, uh, well, that I recollect, the first time that we met was at the BET Hip Hop Awards mm -hmm. on the green carpet. And this dude ran up. I was looking at him come up with carpet, and it, it blew my mind. Mm. It blew my mind how much he resembled Tupac Shakur without the makeup, without anything. Right. Just normally on his own, this is how this dude ended up looking. And he came up to me, and we introduced ourselves, and he said, man, I play Tupac. I said, man, you look just like him. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and it was yeah. bugging me out because I wanted to hug you. Right. Like, man, where you been? <laughs> so the Machiavelli thing was true? <laughs> it was in Cuba? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a 20-year-old Pac. You know, I yeah. don't know what Pac would look like today, but uh, welcome him to the show, the one only Demetrius Ship Jr. Amazing. Man, Amazing. I'm so so grateful to be here, bro. This is This is great. This is this makes my New York trip complete for real. Oh man, nah, man, it's good to have you. You and I have been have been communicating right, right. for a mo moment to make this happen, but yeah. it would have been way too soon. Yeah, had we done it back then, but right, this right. is perfect right now. How do you guys? I'm curious. Yeah. How do you guys understand Tupac in his in his legacy? What did you know about? Him? Like your father worked with him. Yeah, right? he produced Hustle It Up. Um, so just Wait, go hold on. up. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? He threw that out there like, like, did you hear that? He just threw that out. Like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, he produced yeah. toss it up. Anyway, my so. pops was at death row before Pop got there. Say, and then, yeah, yeah. Say your pop's name. Uh, Demetrius Ship Senior. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Talk about because death row before Pop got there uh, was Dre still. Dre was. Uh yeah for yeah, sure. Dre yeah. was there. There was Dr. Dre and there was a slew of producers right, right, right. that worked right. under that umbrella. Yeah, there was a lot of rooms and stuff. So, um, really one of the things that my pops was doing at the time, he was really working with uh, Joel and putting her album together. They mm -hmm. was working, he was produced, he actually produced and wrote her, like, her whole album. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? For whatever reasons, it never came out. I think it was because, you know, Death Row went under. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's what he was working on. And then Pac got there and then, you know, he got his opportunity to work with Pac. Mm -hmm. And then that's how that happened. And they, they became friends, you know. And uh, yeah, I don't think I was around Death Row. I was around Death Row as a kid. Yeah, but I think by the time Pac got there, I wasn't coming up there no more. It might have got a little too crazy. Yeah, you were too young for that, man. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was up there a couple of times. Where I remember Suge's office and all that. 
You remember wow. Suge? Yeah. What What do you remember? What did it feel like being a kid in Death Row at that time? I mean, you seven. I don't, you know what I'm saying? At seven yeah. years old, you just like, oh, this is this is dope. This is my my dad's job, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's to, he's an entertainer him, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I used to give and, him candy when he came to the office. <laughs> <Get this. laughs> you know, get him candy. But, that was my guy. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what you did, Suge. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I mean, it it really wasn't like the first time. My dad been in music since I've been born, really. You know okay. What I'm so that was like one of the other things. I was around the studio when he was doing. In the album, the the group Troop, you know what I'm saying? I was I was there when he recorded that. Troop? Wow. Yeah. Spread my wings? No, nah, not that one. Not that. He was on the, the very last, <laughs> oh. one of the very last. <laughs> oh, they, Trump. They would call Trump by <laughs> that <laughs> time. They were, <laughs> no, they no, were Troop. They, troop. No, they no, was Troop. The, uh, what was the last album? Uh, I don't it, know. It's not important. Just, yeah, exactly. um, what did your dad, it is important. I love Troop. Don't get me wrong. Especially when they used to wear them jackets. Uh. What was those jackets called? The troop, troop jackets. jackets. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what did your dad? I know your dad told you stories about pot. And this. Uh, <clears throat> um, one. Of the, I mean, he just told me that you know they were they were developing a friendship and uh, that pot, you know, came in a couple of times. You know, venting venting to him about certain things. Um, like what? I don't want to get into that because that's kind of personal what he was telling me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But um, business matters, though. Nah, personal, like oh, personal. family type of stuff. Okay. Um, so I definitely want to talk about no, that. No, no, but no, um, respect. yeah, uh, you know, he was telling me that, and then he told me also that you know Tupac worked like he had a clock on his back. That's that's a, that was his whole thing. He was always just like moving, trying to you know work. It was nothing but nonstop, constant work. With mm-hmm. yeah. One of la- the last, I want to say the last thing he said to me is, "I did this interview with you." So you could give it to the world, because I don't think I'm gonna be here to do so. Mm-hmm. He always felt like his time was limited. Yeah. Did you capture that in the character? So, with my acting coach, yeah, that was one of the things that we used. You know what I'm saying? Like the underneath. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, something that's always in the back of your head. That within every scene, you always have to know that your time is is clicking. You have to you have to hurry up and get whatever it is done. Right now, because mm-hmm. you don't know when what's gonna happen. You play Suge Knight. Yes, sir. Suge used to walk in a room, and all eyes was on him. Mm-hmm. Like I remember being at the Source Awards when Suge got up on stage and and said, "If you want to be with a CEO, who's not gonna be in your video dancing mm-hmm. in your videos mm-hmm. and the whole night." Mm-hmm. And that was at that was at the Garden. Yeah, it was <laughs> in New York. And, and, and the whole it's room gangsta. was silent. <laughs> you know. Yeah. What did you learn about him? Uh, you know, I've been following. Uh, I, I was I was raised a little on the West Coast, uh, well, Phoenix area on the West Side of the nation, and mm-hmm. then you know on the East East Side as well. But I was out there in the I was a kid, but it was like in the prime of Death Row. Mm-hmm. And on, in the West at that time, they didn't play no East Coast music, so everything was West Coast. So that's you know my formative years. <laughs> Benny, Benny Boom, Boom just walked in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Benny Boom just walked in. <laughs> Go, but go, go. in my formative years, you know, that's what stuck with me. So I always had that, you know, that love for the West Coast music, especially that era. Uh-huh. And so, you know, and and I always looked up to all of those guys that, you know, they were idols, so even, you know, should. Yeah. You know, and uh, just like a lot of people, you know, people, they, they have their own opinions of you. You get a bad rap or a good rap, you know, it's up to people's opinions. But uh, and then this experience, man, it's just been being around, uh, you know, guys like LT and, uh, Benny and uh, you know Noble and Edie and all the you know just getting that history because we got history lessons along with while we were filming yeah just hearing these guys reminisce and talk about things and stuff like that and um, the I think I think one of the most funniest things I learned about him was the pranks uh-huh. you know the pr- pulling the pranks around Death Row you don't hear about the playful fun stuff like that like guys do you know what uh-huh. I mean and those but when you hear those not the media but when you hear the people that know them and were around them and talk about them. They don't talk about a bunch of bad stuff. Yeah. Talk about a lot of laughing and good times and things like that. I think that blew my mind away the most. And just the the people that knew him, because there were all kind of people around us that knew these, had known these people in real life. Yeah. And their reactions to us, you know, when they'd be around me or when they would see me come out, you know, getting ready outfit. to come to set, all, you know, done up with the death row chain and suit. Like, oh, like, man, like, you know, you got even that feeling, you know, so. I did my best to put myself, you know, in that mind frame and, you know, I had good, great people around me. Uh-huh. This dude helped make it easy because, like you said, when you can look over there and see Pac and then, you know, his energy and everything, you know what I mean? And it was like other people had pointed it out even offset because he was like high energy. 
Yeah. And I was more like Suge, more chill. I'm bigger, older, you know, a little older, so I was like the bigger brother. And he was all, you know, super energy and all that, you know, yeah. go, go, just go. Just like Pac. Yeah, yeah, so people would make comments looking at us like, you know, y'all doing that on purpose, you know, just stay in character and stuff. I was like, you know, nah, we just... They picked the right people. They you picked know. The what right can people. I say? You know? Congratulations, <laughs> man. Thank this you. is an iconic film. And those eyelashes are yours, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. No, 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 those bro. are mint. Yeah. Those, 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 that's the mint ones, up, right? All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now now, look who look who just walked in, have the beat. I know. The executives on the set just walked <laughs> in. Hefe. Late. This man I've known for decades. Time. You know, we even had a great Pac. We got a great Pac story. Mm. 100%. Uh, 100%. I've known from working with Death Row. I know him for uh, working with Ruthless. I know him from the various soundtracks that he's worked on. LT Hutton is here, ladies and gentlemen. This man, easily one of the most celebrated video makers hip hop has ever seen, but movie makers as well. Not only did he shoot videos, he helped build careers. Yeah. He helped mm -hmm. build brands through yep. his vision. Uh, the one and only Benny Boom is here. Benny! Yeah. We only got five minutes. I know. Sorry, yeah, traffic, traffic man. Crazy. crazy. So, okay, <laughs> whatever. We're here. All yeah. right, uh, Benny. Um, yes. Let me ask you this. Uh, and and L LT, join in on this. Um, there's a lot of we've been even recently hearing a lot of conversation about Pac and surrounding this movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of energy to me is distracting from who this icon truly yeah. was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. From you, getting you know, seemed like you was gonna uh, fight. <laughs> uh, 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 Mr. Singleton, you know. Oh yeah, no, I would they, never, they, they, fight. Yeah, never fight. No, 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 no. We would. Yeah. I wouldn't fight. There's, there's no. I'm. I mean, I beat the hell out of him. I'm, that's, no, not, no. that's not a win. That's not a win. But you I mean, the, but it, but it hey. getting to that point. Yeah, but I wouldn't do that. Though. Yeah. Did y'all square that out away? We spoke. We spoke. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and I told him how I feel. I respect John. You know, he he did what he did, but he didn't do this movie, so it, it ain't even nothing to talk about. Okay, you know, great. He got his issues, and those issues are not my issues. You uh huh. Know what I'm saying, so. And then y'all walked away, men, and yeah. agreed to disagree. It's nothing to disagree about. He didn't direct it. Okay. <laughs> That's right. the, the the reality is that he had a chance, dropped the ball, I picked the ball up, and we got a touchdown. Okay. What was your role in that, LT? <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, I'm creator, producer, you know what I mean? Um, I put it together from conception. Uh -huh. um, I'm not going to address that guy again because it's not about him. Uh -huh. It's about Tupac, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's, all that stuff is distracting from what we did here and. uh the celebratory part is like you know my journey uh -huh. and you know where I come from and uh there was a picture made about a great icon who was celebrating the life and legacy of Tupac Shakur made by you know people of the culture and from the culture uh -huh. so um that should be celebrated in itself you know most of the times these films they don't get made in the right way uh -huh. you know this was a very very high budget you know um from casting to um everything we did it was just a detailed scenario and anybody that didn't honor and respect that you know it, it don't matter who it is you know they weren't going to be welcomed into this uh scenario so the film is coming out june 16th mm -hmm. all that other mm -hmm. stuff is nonsense yeah. nonsense okay <laughs> let's move on one of the things i noticed in the film is some of the characters that are um being played out and this is where i knew okay they it's gonna be real you know matula shakur um uh, afini of course when I saw Layla Steinberg, you know, mm. being a part of this 100%. movie. Because Layla, Pac, and I used to go around the Bay Area. She told me. She told, okay, and speak to school kids and, mm -hmm. and just kind of mentor kids when we were younger. And Layla played a significant role in its development. 100%. It was important that we flush out things like that, you know, because, you know, people like to take a big eraser and erase history. Yeah. Mm. Um, and you can't do that, you know. In order to tell the Tupac story, you have to tell all the true sides and the unpersonified mm -hmm. uh, scenario. So it's, it was purposely that I was going to go deep in the development of the process and give you a different complexion and things that you may not have known. Because, like, we talked about your stories. And, like I said, um, you remember when we did a, a Pac record, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, what we yeah. went through with, with all that. And that record, you know, was an exclusive. We, we did an exclusive Pac record. How many? What year was that mm -hmm. in? 96. 96. 96. Yeah. 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 LT got mad at us. <laughs> no, I didn't get mad. <laughs> then, okay. All right. But, no, when we was playing the record. But talk about it, man. Yeah. Um, you know, 
because we got so small amount of time, you know, we're going to go in that. We got to come back about yeah. our Tupac experience. But you know how much Pac meant to us, you yeah. know. And, you, and and when people understand Pac's life, you got to understand the time you spend with him is prorated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he lived such a short amount of time. Um, so to, to basically, you know, about the film and what we were trying to do is, like I said, we wanted to just set up the what made Pac Tupac. What uh-huh. set the fire? Yeah. What was his motivation? What was behind him? Not glorify the over-personified negative image, but give you a sense and a look into the man that you kind of actually understand him. Not kind of, but understand him. Like I said, we often criticize for the choices we make, never knowing what we had to choose from. Uh-huh. So it was to set that path and tell the truest, auth- most authentic story on how that fire was lit. And a lot of people, you knew Pac uh-huh. differently. I knew Pac differently than what they see in yeah. the media so we wanted to give you that's why it's named the untold story is because it's not all of the hype and the and the bull it is a real trajectory of the human being the man like when yeah. Snoop say this film would teach you Snoop is not just going to say that cuz he says it he says the true uh if you want to see the all sides of Tupac not just the uh rapper mm-hmm. the actor the mm-hmm. poet the revolutionary and I'll give you it's not a spoiler alert the the part that we use, you know, we kind of flush out the relationship. You know, the first time uh, Snoop spoke on what we use in the film was on this show. Oh, wow. oh, I know. Yeah, I won't say what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. verbatim. That was the really? first time he put it in the, in yeah. that form. So when people yeah. were like, well, information. Snoop, we we talked about that story before. I was there in yeah. the story, but to hear it on this show. Mm-hmm. That documentation, because it was in such a true form, it's like this section is going in the movie. Got to be in the movie. That's you know dope, man. It was, and it was the first time I ever asked him about it, right? Because I had some inkling about it, but right. it took me twenty years to actually right. say, you know what, man? Let me ask you what happened. Right. So I go yeah. deep into it, and we yeah. get behind it and, and oh, go shit. into it. Damn, really? Yeah, we yeah. go into it. Okay, and then after the movie come out, I'll re-release the video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, for real, for real. Okay, like okay. It, it is, the, it's, <laughs> it is, it is, the, it is that it's that section. And it, it plays out, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These guys, are, they don't even know where that piece came yeah. from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. came from this show. It came show. from you from that show. Wow, that's dope, man. Um, We got to go. So yeah. I hate that. But let me ask you something. The Outlaws came up came up here. Oh, um, Edie, I mean, Young Noble came here last week, matter yeah, of fact. last week. Yeah. Just last week. And they were giving a lot of praise to the movie. And I knew, you know, I know because I know you and I know you. I had no doubt it would be authentic. Um, One of the things they said, though, in the end, before Pac passed in terms of his relationship with Biggie. I met Biggie through Pac. Right. right. Pac introduced me. Biggie, you got to get him on your show. Yeah. You know. And in the end, we know what, you know, we kind of know what played out, how it got to where it was. But in the end, they said that um, Pac told them, man, I ain't got no, you know, I ain't got no more beef or quarrels with Biggie, man. I said what I had to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to see everybody move forward and, is that true to your just point? Just to, to give you the the ultimate gem, the song I did called Watch Your Mouth was one of the last songs Tupac ever recorded. And in that song, he dissed everybody. But when he came back from New York, the reason why we pulled it off of uh, Machiavelli, because mm-hmm. that was one of the songs that we was going through yeah. uh, when we was looking for what we was looking for. And um, 100%, he wanted to take that record. He wanted to take the record and take the disses off. Mm. He was he was pulling back his diss. He dissed Biggie, Nas. And right. Nas he dissed uh, everybody on Dre. Oh, you heard the song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he wanted to he wanted to go. He wasn't taking everybody off the list. Yeah. But he said he definitely wanted to take Nas, right? Yeah. Nas started, and you Biggie, know. you know, um, and Diddy. That whole thing. He was leaving that alone. So he's gonna pull that off. Some of the other people he said on there, it was what it was. <laughs> it was, it was, right? <laughs> and see, these are the sides, the layers of him mm-hmm. that, like, when I hear people argue about him 21 years later, it's like, you think you had a full story, but you don't even have a full you know, story. We got a, we, we got a funny not mm-hmm. Tupac, non-Tupac story <laughs> because you was on, on uh, Dead Presidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, we actually battled that president so she, you know, get spider off, get up the floor, spider. That scene was shot yes. outside, right? So, <laughs> right? So, way. so I was hired as a PA. I was working as a PA here in New York on movies and stuff. And when we got to the set, it was in the Bronx. It was freezing, freezing. cold mm-hmm. that day, and we were there for three nights. I think. Mm-hmm. And they, I was told when I got my walkie, you know, go stand over there, 
and I want you, if you see Tupac, call me on the walkie. <laughs> I'm like, wait, <laughs> you didn't even know that. No. That one day, it was like five or six, like, big dude, way bigger than me, big dude, walking around. on And we were there particularly to watch, to find, because of the Hughes brothers and Pac was shooting, you know, and he was around. So they were worried because they were shooting outside that he was going to oh, show up. That he was going to show up. That's what we met, right? Mm-hmm. On that. <laughs> 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 that's so crazy. No, and we just wanted to give you love. I wanted to just mention that, Benny. We are all so happy for you. Oh, like, thank you, just thank we you. know your history. We thank know you. where it started. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank God you, bless you. you. We thank are all so, so super happy thank for you, you, Benny. I appreciate that. Well deserved. Thank you, LT, man. That. Man, appreciate it. Yeah. Man, this long dude journey, ten years, man, long, making long this movie, journey. and it's ten finally years. here, man. We're gonna, we're all gonna watch it. We're yes. actually, um, we're gonna be hosting a premiere oh, um, mm-hmm. this Thursday in mm-hmm. New York, right? In New York, so we'll be hosting that premiere, and um, I can't, we not, we gonna give away three pairs of tickets right now. <laughs> Good. Did you see it yet? No, I'm waiting to oh, see it on the big screen. I don't want to yeah. see it. I want to see it on the screen. Gotcha. Yeah. I got it in my pocket. You want to see it on my phone? Send me an email, man. Nah, I, I want to see it on the big screen. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, screen. Yeah, I, yeah. like, work like this, I don't want to spoil yeah. it for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to see it like a fan see. would see it. You exactly. Know what I, mean? I feel the same way. LT has forced me into watching certain scenes. Yeah. I'm like, I do not, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah. But he made me watch like oh. the, yeah. The, Just to speak to I pulled to you it. in in LA. I yeah, pulled exactly. you in. Yeah, exactly. Biddy pulled like, me in like. We was, but it was the big screen yeah. and we pulled him in and he sat and he was like, he sat down and he said, I, got, I, can't, I can't watch, I gotta see the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I had yeah. to go, man. That's yeah. dope. I haven't seen Con- it either. That's dope. Congratulations to these young men, man. Yeah. Demetrius, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Dominic, the, congratulations. Uh, we got three pair of tickets, man. Um, sh- Name three Pac albums. Call us, 888-742-3345. Lord Sears is up next. So we want to thank, uh, from Origins of New Black, Uzo Aduba for coming by today. Yes. Um, What's going on? Okay, that's it. And then I want to thank you but, guys. But, but, but tell me. Yo. Come on, man. When I first met him. <laughs> come on, man. When I first met him. And he came up to me. Yo, he, he did it the same way Pac used to do. Kind of run up in your space. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that's all, that's all I'm telling you, Pac man. Pac used to run up in your space. You know, yo, what's up, Frank? What's up, Frank? That's crazy. You know, he, he did that to me. You know I was like, Naturally, Damn. though. That's no makeup. No, no extra. Nothing. That's yeah. just, you know what I mean? So when people say, oh, you know, and psh- we gonna deal with that in, in the minute. next segment. Oh my God! You gotta give credit where credit is due, due man. man. For real. How much pussy you getting, man? <laughs> <laughs> you killing the game, huh? Nah, man. I'm chilly, chill. Man. Hey, man, the young like... squire, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we, on, on set, on the real side, on the set, you had mothers and daughters because he, you know, he's younger. But the mothers were in love with Pac. Yeah. Yeah. So now they know him. Yeah. So it was like you had mother and daughter teams like, uh, you yeah. want to come over for dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, Yo Pac kept a lot of condoms, dog. <laughs> I got a lot of kids already, so I'm, I'm packed up on them for the show. Good, good, good. All right, gentlemen, thank you for coming through. Thank man. you. Well, come, come back and we can Sorry sit down the on the interview. Don't worry about it. We'll come back. Come I back apologize afterwards. for New York traffic. That's yeah. I, It's absolutely ridiculous. It's say, it said uh, 0. 0.3 miles, wow. 1745 million minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, come back. Yes, sir. You guys always come Good back. Work, you, Neither man. one of y'all been on this show. I know, man. We man, we've been so grinding, yeah. bro. Y- y'all come back too, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I will definitely. Right. After the awards, come back. Yeah. All right. That's That's all right. We got Lord Sear up next, man. We're gonna uh, let him get up on this airway. Sway in the morning, Shay four five. Till tomorrow, we have nothing. Left to say. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.